Hey there, fellow Tarnished Souls. I actually didn't expect Elden Ring to get another patch so soon, but they kind of did a big one. I'm quite surprised. What I'm even more surprised by is the fact that all the ranged weapons were untouched, whereas like everything else got buffed or fixed from being super OP. I kind of found that weird. So I figured that if they're not going to touch ranged weapons, well, I might as well update my mod and fix it myself. Now what was annoying was that they changed up a lot of the parameters in the files, like from zeros and ones to true and falses, and it looks like they removed some parameters in the items and stuff, which is kind of annoying, like there's like six fields missing. And basically because of that, I couldn't import any of my mod data back from version 03 to updated version 04. And I had to start from scratch as I have no idea how to effectively shift everything over for the 04 version. So I updated my mod to an initial release of version 1.0 and there's not much more I can do without some more tools to change like the Ashes of War parameters and the weapon moveset data. So with that little grab out of the way, let me get into the mod and show what it has to offer the ranged player base. First thing that I added was slightly higher scaling for bows. They have very poor scaling in base games, sitting around D on strength and dex for pretty much every bow. While this is still true in the mod, I did overall buff the scaling by about 15%. Most bows get about 20 more added damage with high scaling. I originally made the mod with some crazy levels of scaling, but after going through the game on New Game Plus and doing no hit bosses with bows, I've come to realize that bows are okay, you know, post game when you have all your materials and equipment and stuff, but only when you really mid max to them and trying hard. So I wanted this mod to be for more of the casual crowd who wants to start a ranged only journey, at least comfortably, because it is a pain to start that. So the biggest thing here that I've added is affinity options for the non-somber bows. This means that they can now be any of the 12 affinities. My goal was to give other bows a chance to shine because currently the black bow is the best and only bow in the game. Now you can have fire infused bows, bleed bows, lightning bows, anything you want. So not only can you specialize in elemental damage or physical damage if you want, but you can also make bow builds that scale off of faith or int or arcane, allowing you to do more caster and bow builds. This should help give the players more freedom in how they approach their range builds. With the addition to the affinities, I also added a bunch of Ashes of War to the bow roster. You can now equip more than just the few bow weapon arts. I do gotta say though, most of the other Ashes aren't really suited for bow gameplay, but it is still an option if you want it. I like the idea of having melee Ashes of War to use on enemies that get close to you, such as stomps, roars, and the carrying greatsword stuff. These are the biggest changes to the bow gameplay experience. Next, I wanted to give all the bows their own identity, because for the most part, all the bows do the same-ish damage and with the same-ish scaling, there's not much of a difference between any of them. So now they'll have some kind of perk or unique stat that makes them, you know, unique, besides, you know, the short bow and the long bow. A few examples of this are that the red branch short bow has long bow range, but costs more stamina to use. The horn bow leeches FP on kill and is a pure magic bow now. The Erd Tree Bow and Great Bow deal additional damage to undead targets while providing life regeneration and dealing pure holy damage. The Albinoric Bow deals additional damage while crouched, because Albinorics can't walk, and the Serpent Bow's poison is much stronger than standard poisons, and the Poli Bow can load Great Arrows. Great Bows in general didn't get too much of a change, uh, but their arrows now travel much faster, making them excellent for sniping, and they do deal additional posture damage, because, I mean, they're huge giant arrows. They should do more posture damage. All the bone arrows and bolts are now strike damage as well, which gives bows an option when their target takes no pierce damage, such as Crystallians, Falling Star Beasts, and any of the miners. Crossbows got a damage buff across the board. They deal about twice as much damage as before, which probably sounds crazy to most people, but honestly it's not. The only thing anyone ever used them for was in PvP using Thunderbolts in the water at Lyurnia Lake. So with double damage, they now deal about 400 damage when fully upgraded instead of 200. To compensate for this though, I did reduce the amount of bolts you can carry from 99 to 30 for the physical bolts and to 20 for the elemental and status bolts. The reason is, is I want the crossbows to be a good ranged options for those who don't want to invest stats into them. With the damage increase, it should be fine for pulling or disengaging and finishing off enemies safely, but with their reduced bolt count, they really don't have enough to be a primary ranged weapon or to be used on bosses effectively. Crossbows were very, very bad before, and only the pulley crossbow got any action just due to being able to apply status as easily, which it still can't do. The Hambless and the Jar Cannon underwent some big changes though. They now function as shotguns, they have shorter ranges and shoot a burst of 7 bolts in a cone. Their damage is low, but when fully upgraded you can dish out some pretty solid damage at point blank ranges. Be careful though, as their recovery time is atrocious, so if you don't kill or stagger the enemy, you're going to be eating hits. 
Adding on to this, the black key crossbow also functions like a shotgun, but obviously more mobile as it's a standard crossbow. It doesn't do as much damage as the hand ballistas, but it's definitely a safer option if you'd like it. I also went ahead and tweaked the consumable throwing items, including pots, throwing knives, and magic glintstones and such. These are now all infinite use, but do require FP to use. Items that already cost FP have an increased FP cost. I find this a fine trade for having unlimited kukris or throwing daggers. You can build around them by having more mind and flasks, and still play a throwables only character from the start of the game by picking up you know, the throwing knives at Kale the Merchant. I wanted to give players a tool to play however they want without making things obscenely broken, but after seeing the latest patch, like fucking everything's broken except range it seems. Lastly, for some of the quality of life changes, I did make Kale the Merchant sell flight pinions like the feathers to make arrows and the Stormwing feathers, so you can actually craft arrows now without having to farm birds. On top of this, I did make all the crafting of arrows and bolts craft three times the amount, so arrows are now 30 per craft and great arrows are 15. You can check the mod page or the patch notes in the readme if you want a full list of changes, but that was kind of the main things. I do hope some people get enjoyment out of this mod, and while you can't use it online, I think that's fine, because nobody plays ranged online anyways, unless you're trolling with the ballista and knocking people off walls, which you don't need my mod for that. Just make sure you back up your regulations file before using this mod, and if you do get a save corrupt, just load up the normal regulations and it'll reset your character and remove all of my nonsense. I did have that problem when the game updated to version 1.04, but yeah. But that's basically all for me. Uh, thank you all for watching. I appreciate it as always. And good luck out there, Tarnished.